Hey, hey. I just did that. Am I good? Okay. That's all right. Let's go. Hey, everybody. Welcome to my world. The Let's Talk with Carolyn radio show. I don't see my other phone. Give me a minute. Just stay tuned in for a minute. Yes, it is. Cold outside in Philly. Hey, y'all. How y'all doing today? Enough of that. So I don't get a warning to Mr. Meta himself. So how y'all doing today? Happy Tuesday. Blessings up. February is almost over. Yes, it is. So today's topic, everybody, is going to be on journaling for mental health as well as Where's my journal? I got to get it. Journal for mental health, as well as prebiotics and probiotics. So I want to start off with journaling for mental health first. And I'm going to see if Facebook allows me to do this. I really hope so. I don't know. I'm about to find out. Give me a minute, y'all. I will say this. Journaling is good. Journaling is really good for the mind. It is good for the soul. The only difference is being consistent when you're journaling. That's key. Being very consistent when you're journaling because sometimes you think you can forget to do your journaling. So it, it's it's a consistency. And I'm guilty because I had started journaling last year. And I notice like life stuff get in the way and I tend to forget to write in my journal. And then I was like, should I carry this around with me every day? Cause I was there. Should I carry my journal around with me every day? And then my thoughts was maybe not. I don't want nobody seeing what I put what I've written down in my journal because it's meant for me until I'm ready to share it with somebody. Um, and it took me a long time to start to even journal again because of an experience I had when I was younger. So, you know, like when, you're, when you are young and you, you're, you're a young person, little boy, little girl, and when I was little, I used to write a lot. I used to write in books a lot. And I didn't know at that time it was poetry, but it was just my thoughts. And then I would write about things that happened to me that I was experienced that really played on my conscience as a little girl. Then one day, and this is what actually stopped me from ever writing anything down about my life. One day, a family member found my book. One of the adults found my book and she read it. And she said something about it. And as a little girl, like back when I was coming up, you didn't talk back. You didn't dare talk back. Whatever thoughts you had, you kept them to yourself. And when she did that, in my mind, I'm never doing that again. Because from that point on, I believe that what I did 
was wrong because I was verbally chastised for it. I don't know what happened to that book. Don't know, but I know that from that point on, I never did a journal about anything when it came to what's going on in my personal life. So I didn't start journaling again until last year. And last year, in the beginning of last year, I said, you know what? I'm ready. I'm going to write down my thoughts. I'm going to write down as far as I can remember from me being a little girl and things that was going on in my life as a little girl. And I actually started it. And the reason why I started it, because if y'all remember, I did segments with um, I Am My Sister's Keeper. And in one of those segments, there was authors that was talking and they let me know, you need to share your story. Cause I told them my story and they say, listen, Carol, you need to share your story because your story can help other people. So that was the reason it took me two years later to even think about putting ink, pen and paper about my life. So I have my journal over there and it's gonna stay there. I, I have not finalized if I want to share what's in that journal or not. But I will say this, once I started journaling and taking it as far back as I can remember, I felt a release because now it's on paper. I can go back, I can read it. Things that touch me, things that hurt me, things that bothered me, things that made me happy, things that I accomplished, was, is now on paper and I could reflect back and say, what have I accomplished in my life? Who was negative in my life? Who has hurt me in my life? Who has taken advantage of my kindness in my life? So once I did all that on paper, I was like, I'm good. I just have to stay consistent. So according to science, journaling is associated with the increase of well-being and the decrease of distress stress. According to science, I didn't make that up. It's according to science. And once I read that, I was like, increase in well-being. Did I feel better after I journaled every day I did because I got it off my chest and I did a brain dump and put it on paper so let me see something let me see where we at y'all I don't know where we at but I'm about to find out okay let's see what happens here All right, so journaling is good for mental health. If you ever feel as though you need a mental break, you just need to take everything that is going on upstairs, whether it's conscious or subconscious. And sometimes the subconscious things can come to the conscious mind. And if it's feel like it's, you got a lot going on, because this is your navigation system. You got a lot going on. Whatever you feel like you need to put out on paper, put it on paper. Journaling is a way of expressing your most inner thoughts at the core, at the soul of your heart. And as I became an adult, I learned what I did as a little girl, writing in a little notebook I had. And for years, I thought it was a bad thing. I didn't learn that it was a good thing and that it was okay. I didn't learn that until adulthood. So parents, 
legal guardians, if you find your child's journal, don't chastise them and make them believe, oh, you did a bad thing. They're doing nothing wrong. They're writing down how they feel. Other ways children do it is children draw. They draw pictures of what's going on up here. I was a writer, so I wrote mine out. Another way is they draw. And depending on that drawing, and drawing is also journaling. It's good for therapy. And depending on what's on that paper that a person draws, whether it's child or adult, they're telling a story. You just have to take a look at it deeply and see what it is, what the story is without them saying a word. That's therapy. That's good therapy. So it's a way of getting out a person emotions, whether they happy, sad, they just got finished crying, they had some bad news, they had some good news, or they found out something about somebody or something that did not directly affect them, but because they are human, as a human being, it did. It did affect them. And sometimes we don't have to know someone for whatever happened to somebody to have a sensitive, heartfelt effect on us. People journal about that. So I want to get into some journaling prompts. I wrote some down as I was thinking about doing this. And you know, I'm letting y'all a little bit into my life. And I'm a very, very, very private person. I mean, private. So I'm letting you in today. Today, I let you in. So my question is, does your mental health need a break? Does your mental health need a boost? There's several things you could do. If you like to draw, draw it out. If you are a writer, write it out and you date it. In my journal, for every day that I started, I dated it. Because to me today, at my age, journaling is a good thing. It's therapy for me. Other things I do is therapy. Like I make jewelry, that's therapy for me. I make skincare products, that's therapy for me. Journaling is also therapy because everything that's going on up here, every, every thought, every emotion that I wanna get out, I'm okay with putting it on paper. And anybody who is in that space, where I am, it's okay for you to put it on paper. So let me give you some prompts. And prompts is just emotions that you may have felt that you can write about, that you can journal about. So you could talk about how your day was. And, and this, this is an easy one because People encounter this every day. People encounter this every day. And hold on, y'all. I'm watching. Got to watch the radio here. All right. And this question is asked amongst people. If you haven't seen your loved one in the course of the day, because both of y'all work or mom and daughter work, or dad and son work, or sibling work, whatever. And when you finally meet up, you're asking them, well, how was your day? What was your day like? 
Yeah. Hold on. Hold on, everybody. This is my grandbaby. When you finish, you know how to do this? Mm -hmm. All right, let me get you out of here. All right, when you finish, bring my phone back. All right. So you asked each other during the course of the day, like, how, how was your day? Did you have a bad day? Did you have a good day? Did you have a fun day? Did you have an exciting day? Or was it one of those badass days? Was it a Murphy's Law day? So that's a prompt. Talk about what your day was like in your journal and date it. Remember this. Every day is a journal day. You just have to be consistent with it. And what's ever going on in your navigation system and it's bothering you and it's heavy on your mind, put it on paper. Read it. Take a look at it. Reflect back on it later on. At least it's out of here. All right? That was one. Number two, identify things you are grateful for. Identify things that you are thankful for. We're all thankful that and grateful that, you know, the creator has blessed us to wake up with all our faculties in place. Some people didn't make it. Think about that for a minute. A lot of people transitioned. We, if you're listening to me and I'm still here, we are so blessed. We're very blessed that we are here. Yes, we should be grateful. Yes, we should be thankful. What else can you be grateful for? You have a job that could take care of your bills, that could keep shelter on, that could keep food in, that could clothe you. Those are some of the things, just a few basic essentials that you can be grateful and thankful for. If you still have your parents, yes. Hi, Mark. Hi, Mr. Sador. Hi, Pamela. How y'all doing? I can never say Precious' name, Mrs. I'm gonna just say Miss Smith, because I don't never want to mess your name up. One day, when I see you again, teach me how to pronounce your name, because I don't want to mess it up. I don't want to do that. So these are just some of the things that we could be grateful and thankful for. And the basic one, we still have a heart that's beating. That means we're still alive. Be thankful, be grateful. The next writing prompt is this. Write a list of your coping mechanisms. That's a biggie. Write a list of your coping mechanisms. How do you cope in a bad situation, in a good situation, when your back is up against the wall and you have no choice? How do you deal with that? Do you lash out at a person? Do you cuss them out? What are you doing? What are your coping mechanisms? One of my coping mechanisms is I learned to walk away. I learned to say no. That's me. I know how to say no real quick. If it's something I don't want to do, no. If it's something I don't want to give up, I'm not doing that. Quickly. If I feel like it's going to pursue an argument, I pick and choose my battles cautiously. That I will do. Sometimes I'm like, you know what? I'm going to just walk away from this because I'm tired. You ever had that? Were you tired of talking about the same subjects over and over and over again to some people and they just don't freaking get it? You got an option. You can still talk to them or you can put your hands up and walk away. Those are your options. Next writing mechanism, next writing prompt is describe your goals. You should have a goal for every year, maybe every month. Maybe a year is like too far-fetched for some people and you might have to do it one week at a time. That's great. Or one month at a time. That's great. So if you don't have no goals, 
like you have no goals, maybe you should start thinking about it. And that would be a good time today to start a journal on what is my goal? I asked one of my ladies that this morning because when I see individuals that I know have a potential to accomplish more for themselves and I'm always in their ear pressing them and when I see that they are getting complacent or they just getting comfortable, I question and I question her, what is your goal? I wanted to know, did she have any goals? Because what her actions are is complacency. She's getting ready to get comfortable where she is because it's easy. Because it's easy. We do things that are easy. And some people take the easy way. Why? Take the challenge road. If you challenge yourself, just try it. Challenge yourself and say, you know what? I'm gonna set this goal. I'm gonna put a date on it. I'm gonna accomplish this at such a such a date. And then you work on it using the SMART system which means your goal needs to be specific. It needs to be measurable. It needs to be attainable. It needs to be reachable. And it should have a timeline. It should have a deadline because that locks you in. And you take that goal and you look at it every day. Do a freaking vision board if you have to. If you think a journal is not enough, go to the dollar store. I'm having a hot flash. Wait a minute, y'all. I'm having a hot flash. Oh my goodness, I'm having this hot flash. I feel my pores opening up. I don't know. I'm having a hot flash. But anyway, if you feel as though, listen, writing is not enough for me. Go to the dollar store, go to Walmart, get one of those boards that we all use for vision boards, get busy. Let that be part of your journaling. Remember, I said that drawing is also a way of journaling because drawing tells a story. Your vision board tells a story. Your goal is going to tell a story. It's going to tell a story of what you want your future to be like. Only you can do that. Next prompt. Write about how different you are compared to five years ago. How are you different from your current way now to five years ago? Are you better? Are you in a better position? Are you mentally better? Are you in a good space? Or are you still in the same space as you were five years ago? And if so, it's time for you to make a change. It is definitely time for you to make some type of change. If you're still in the same space that you were five years ago, what are you still doing there? You can only go forward. There's no need to going back because there's nothing back there but the past. Past you can't change. <clears throat> you can learn from them, but you definitely can't change it. So there's no need to look back. You can reflect, learn, make a change and do something about it. That's number five. Number six, write a letter to your body. You satisfied with the skin you in? You okay with that body that you have? That the creator has given you? That you have control of how it looks? how it feels, you're okay with the skin you in? Writing prompt, that's a journal y'all, that's number six. Number seven, list and describe your emotions. Hmm. No matter how 
good, bad, or indifferent they are. List and describe your emotions. Keep this in mind. Nobody sees this journal but you, unless you choose to share it with someone. That's the only way they can see it. Unless you choose to share it with someone. Nobody sees this. This is your personal journal. These are your personal thoughts. These are your personal emotions. This is you. This is all of you. 100% you. Unless you choose to share it with someone. Your wife, your husband, your bestie, your sister. If y'all that close, I don't know. I don't know about that one. But definitely your spouse, bestie, if y'all really that close and you can really trust your bestie like that. Hmm, something to think about. Number eight, write about how you would describe yourself as a stranger. How would you introduce yourself to you? How do you see yourself? What are your qualities? What are your traits? What are your characteristics? Are your traits, your qualities, and your characteristics of who you really are fit the description of what people see? Or do they see something different? Just the prompt, y'all, just the prompt, just the writing prompt, thought for information, things that make you go, mm. Number nine, describe the best compliment that somebody ever gave you. If you ever received a compliment, and I'm sure all of us have, describe the best compliment that someone has said to you. What's the best, comp thank you for the heart love. Thank you for the thumbs up. Describe the best compliment that someone has given you. And when they gave you that comp compliment, how did you respond? Did you say thank you for the compliment? Or did you like, mm, okay. Was you bougie about it? Instead of being humble about it? Hello. When you have your bad days, write a letter to yourself. When you have your bad days, write a letter to yourself. I had a young person show me a drawing. Young person showed me the drawing, type of journaling. And the young person said, I was mad on this day. When I looked at the drawing, and I'm looking at it, I can see that this young person was mad. They had, that drawing had a mad face, had some lightning going through it, and it was headed to the, what was supposed to be the ground. Told the story. This young person was kind of upset that day. What do you do in your bad days? How are you taking it in? Do you take it in until it eats you up? Or do you say, you know what? Not today. I'm not going to let this get to me today. Maybe another day. And depending on how bad it is, maybe not freaking ever. Pick or choose. Who you let, how you let someone get to your soul. Is they worth it? Are they worth you letting them get inside your soul to where it's going to affect you? Writing prompt, y'all. Writing prompt. Now, let's move on to some things you can do. These are things you can do. Everybody has one of these, right? You have one of these. You can, whatever you use, Spotify, SoundCloud, Pandora. I use Pandora. This is what I want you to do. And Pandora has a paid subscription and a free subscription. 
go with the free subscription, okay? Don't put out no money like me. Go with the free subscription. And this is what I suggest you do. You can download Pandora if you don't already have it. Type in Zen Music. Another type you can type in, type in Calm Music. That's number two. Type in Reiki Music. All of these is soothing sounds for your navigation system. All of these is soothing sounds for your navigation system to calm down your nervous system so you can relax. Listen to the songs in your journal book. Write down the songs that made you feel most relaxed. And that's the song that you're going to go to when you are here with stuff, stressed out. It's all in your crown system. It's all affecting your third eye. Listen to some calm, relaxing, soothing, meditation, zen music so you can wind down and not let everyday stresses get to your heart, get to your soul and screw with your head. Has a tendency of doing that sometimes. All right. So next, I got 10 minutes. I think I spent too much time. Well, it was needed. It was needed. So I want to talk about prebiotics and probiotics. So y'all know that I am a Holist, a walk-in holistic medicine cabinet. I am. So I want to talk about prebiotics. Prebiotics promote the growth and proliferation of beneficial bacteria in the digestive system, which is your gut health. Everything we put here goes to our alimentary canal and our gut system where everything seems to happen and take place. And depending on what it is to be putting in there, it tends to show on the outside. Now, I will say this. Prebiotics, you have types. Hi, Trina. You have types of prebiotics. Anything that has sugar. Now, keep this in mind. Starches, carbohydrates turn into sugar. Sugar is bad. Stop eating sugar for like a month. See what happens to the gut. Sugar is also addictive. It is also a, anything that has sugar is a prebiotic. All right. I'm going to tell you what some prebiotics help with. They do help with the heart. They help with our immune system. And they help with chronic illness and digestion. Prebiotics can help. Then I'm going to show you my little stuff I have that I take on a regular basis. Next is, I'm going to tell you this. People who are on insulin, there is, insulin is found in 36,000 plants, such as herbs, fruits, sweet vegetables, raw apple cider, Mother's milk for babies, mother's milk for babies, and echo bloom. So let's go with herbs, chicory root, burdock root, dandelion root, fruits such as apples and bananas, sweet vegetables, onions, garlic, asparagus, leeks, and Jerusalem artichokes. And the pre for body ecology, the prebiotic dietary fiber supplement. And you can find those in the CVS, the Walgreens, the Rite Aid. You can find them in there. Probiotics are dietary supplements or food products that contain beneficial, friendly, good bacteria or yeast normally found in your human body. They also help with the immune system and provide a natural defense or the immune system for the body. They help with the digestive system, but they also 
Probiotics help prevent disease. They cure vaginal yeast infections, urinary tract infections, prevent diarrhea after having treatment with certain antibiotics. Hmm. Prevent diarrhea caused by virus or salmonella, manage the signs and signs of irritable bowel syndrome, strengthen the immune system to combat allergies and other immune diseases, reduce amounts of cancer causing substances in the intestine, reduce the effects of candida infection, prevent and or reduce colon cancer, reduce the development of allergy in our children, reduce infections and inflammation and fight eczema. That would be me. The eczema part would definitely be me. The digestive, and I'm gonna show you, I never, you know what? I never do things as they are prescribed unless it is Western medicine. So I'm gonna share with you what I take. Y'all are familiar with the essential oils that I take. I take On Guard, which is preventive for bacteria and viruses. Y'all see that? I also take, I got two of these. Two. I also take lemon. I take lemon for detoxification and I put two drops of this in my water and my bottles of water every time I have a bottle of water that I drink. So I take the lemon essential oil. Now, let me backtrack. Let me digress for a minute. I take certain essential oils internally. I'm going to say this, consult with your primary care physician before taking any essential oil that I talk about. However, I will tell you this, you can go to, let me see if I can find it. Cause I don't want to give y'all the wrong thing. Hold on a minute. I'm gonna see if I can, the shortest way there is this. You can go to my Instagram account, www.instagram dot com forward slash Philly Town Hall Spa. When you get to my Instagram account, I want you to go to my bio, click on my link. It's going to take you to my link tree. Once you get to my link tree, you're going to scroll to the bottom. You're going to see wellness advocate. No, I don't want you to become a wellness advocate. However, that is the link to the website where you can get these essential oils, okay? I also take ginger. Ginger is good for helping with digestion. Now, you could do one or two things. I take the ginger essential oil, but I also go to the fresh grocer and actually get the ginger root. You can get the ginger root, make a, put it in, wash it when you get home, cut it up, put it in water. I use purified water, but whatever water you choose is fine. And you could boil it to make your own tea. And you could drink that throughout the course of the week. So or as you're eating on an everyday basis, your digestive system, your gut health is also being metabolized. And keep this in mind. How many, I'm gonna ask you this. When you eat a hot meal, how many of you drink something cold with it? And I'm gonna see if I can get y'all to answer that. When you're eating a hot meal, a hot meal, how many of you have something cold to drink with the hot meal? If that's you, stop, stop, don't do that. If you're having a hot meal, you should be drinking something that is the same temperature as the hot meal that you're having so that your digestive system can run smooth and things don't get cold up, clogged up. Because when you're drinking a hot meal, I'm sorry, we're not drinking a hot meal. When you're eating 
a hot meal and you turn it and you having something nice and cold to drink because it feels good, but it's not healthy that you're drinking something cold with eating a hot meal. This is what happens. That hot meal that you just ate while you're eating and you're drinking something that's cold, what's it going to do to the undigested food that you are eating that is now a bolus of food? Because remember, when you chew your food, and hopefully you chew it up fine enough, when you chew your food, it, it becomes a bolus. It becomes like solid bolus of food because it has to get down the esophagus, which is not a wide pipe. It's not. And here you go, drinking something cold. What happens to the bolus of food? Because you drank something cold. It's not going to go so smooth when it's time for it to go through the entire alimentary canal until it reaches your anus and your body tells you, hey, I got to go to the bathroom. So it's easier because it takes four hours of digestion. It's easier if you have a hot meal and you drink something that is the same temperature as the meal that you are eating. Hopefully that is making sense. If you drink water, you should be drinking room temp water. Now I'm gonna show you something else. I take, I went through the essential oils. Once I got vaccinated, I started taking zinc every day. And here's the thing about zinc. I'm about to go over, I hope he's not, I hope he don't get upset. Here's the thing about zinc. If you got vaccinated, you should be taking zinc. And what I learned, and now, you know what? When you go to the pharmacy, you can't find these like you used to. They used to be stacked up on the shelf. So there's a lot of people that has been vaccinated that is aware of the benefits of zinc if you have been vaccinated. Next is this, I also take, this is called EDGE and it is for mood, motivation and metabolism. I do this for metabolism. I'm gonna show it to you so you know what it is. And hope I don't waste this. It looks like this. And I'm supposed to y'all, supposed to take one scoop but I'm gonna show y'all what I do instead of my scoop. This is metabiotics. Now I take this. This has prebiotics, probiotics, as well as has something else, phytobiotics. And this is also good for mental health. And this looks like Here's the scoop. Supposed to take one scoop and it looks like this, okay? So what I do is I take, cause I'm a hard head. I take half a scoop of this, of the edge, oh shoot. And half a scoop of the metabiotics and I put both in my yogurt. I put both in my yogurt and it does not, you know how you, you have some healthy foods that have a nasty taste to it? This don't. I put it in my yogurt. And I'm good for the day. Then I have, I had to get me some more of this. I had two bottles and I didn't know I was almost out. When we reach 50 and above, our doctors say you need to take 5,000 IUs of vitamin D. I am having a hot flash up in here. We need to take 5,000 IUs of vitamin D. And this is the vitamin D that I take. 
okay? And it's in the liquid form. I used to take the pill form. I'm not good with pills. I'm not good with swallowing no pill. I have an issue with that. But once I learned and found that this vitamin D came in a liquid form, I prefer to take it better. And the reason why I prefer to take the liquid better over the pill is because it gets into the system faster compared to the vitamin D pills that I used to take of 5,000 I use. It takes a longer time to get through the system, but liquid form is easier to get through the system. Same thing with the essential oils. So that's my time, everybody. I hope that you have gotten some benefit out of today's show, today's episode. I am Carolyn, your host on the Let's Talk with Carolyn radio show. I am here every Tuesday, 1 p.m. to 2 p.m. If you need to take any notes on anything I said, this episode, episode is going to be uploaded to the YouTube channel. Sador, don't get me yet. Maybe later, but not today. Not today, Sador, not today. Love you though. So I want to do what I do best. And I want to take the time out to say, thank you, Sador. Mr. Mark Five Allen of the Sador Radio Station, CEO owner. Thank you, Pamela. Thank you, Ms. Smith. Thank you, Trina. And I saw somebody else in here, but Facebook is not letting me see everybody. If I missed your name, thank you for tuning in with me. Tune in with me every Tuesday on the Let's Talk of Carolyn radio show. And I want to put this out there. The Sador radio station host and CEO is having a bowling party April the 23rd. So if you see me sharing the post, buy the ticket. I'm going to say that again. It's April the 23rd. If you see me share the post and you're in Philly, buy a ticket. Bring your whole family. But you want to you want to connect with the CEO of the Sador radio station to get the tickets. So take it, everybody. I'm gonna leave y'all with this before I get banned. Thank you for tuning in. Radio Land, don't go nowhere. Because I'm gonna give y'all a little bit more of some house music. Everybody else, enjoy your day, enjoy your week. February is almost over. If you have no goal, it's time for you to create some goals. Create the journal and start journaling. Journaling is a good thing. Get it out of your navigation system and get it on the paper so you have something to look for, look forward to and reflect back on. Take care, everybody. Enjoy your day. Bye-bye.